Chicken Bone John here and uh, welcome to another of my video lessons on how to play cigar box guitar. This time we're going to uh, go on from the, the blue shuffle to this sort of one chord boogie uh, inspired by John Lee Hooker. A lot of you may know uh, the ZZ Top song, Lagrange, uh, and we're going to base it on this. As I say, it's really based on a, a John Lee Hooker thing. So let's just get into this. There are no chord changes. It's all in the one, pretty much the one position. There are no conventional one, three, five changes. Okay. But the important thing is the rhythm. I'll just get this really slow. I've got a slide on here. I'm not going to be using it much, but it's just really to show how I'm going to use, use the fingering on here. And we're going to be going back on this up, down, up, down, up, down beat. If you checked out one and two parts one and two of my blue shuffle you'll see that so we're going to be down up down up down up down doesn't matter whether you use a plectrum i've got a, a bone plectrum here nice and hard but we just so we go up down up down across all three strings we can do it with the bare fingers similar sort of thing I pinch my thumb and first finger together and I'm going down doing the down strokes with the back of my nail or I can do it sort of finger picking we're gonna do it with the plectrum for simplicity and consistency's sake so it's down up down up down a couple of things remember Stay down on that downstroke. And another important thing is where my, another important thing, I'm holding my, the, the heel of my hand on the bass string to get more of a chug rather than a ring. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay. The other thing. The other thing we're going to be doing is just moving from the third to the fourth fret. Sorry, the other thing we're going to be doing is just going from the third to the fifth fret. And you can do that with one finger or with a bar or the slide. So let me just show that the whole thing and then we'll concentrate on the, the, the two aspects of the different hands. <laughs> the finger one finger on the slide okay so that's the rhythm part of it so it's up down up down up down up down up down up down and three five up down up down up down up down up down up down and three five and one Just a little word about the setup. Um, I've got a lot of overdrive on my guitar amp. I'm going through my session at solid state. This isn't an ideal guitar for it because it's got a, a Fishman um, a piezo pickup system in it. So I put plenty of overdrive. <laughs> Which is, if you're going shooting for that ZZ top sound, that's what you want. If you're going more for the John Lee Hooker, that is a more acoustic sound. But this is what we're going to use on here. Okay. Right, let's just recap what we're doing. Up, down, up, down, up, down with your picking hand. And the only place we're going to go is three and five. Open three and five. Hand doesn't need to move any further up the neck. And as I say, you can simply do that by... 
fretting with one finger. That's the move. And I'm, you see what I'm doing here? I'm, I've, I've got one finger to each fret. Or I can use a bar, same sort of thing. Normally I would slide a bar up, but on here we can, there's in, it's not too big a stretch to do that. Or you can slide that bar. Or indeed you can use your slide. So you've got three different ways of doing it. I'll just play that little phrase again. is to the main riff so I'll just come in a little bit closer here and I say you've got three flavors of doing it let's look what I'm doing exactly here with my fretting and with the, we're only concerned with the open chord the three third fret and the fifth fret down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and three, five, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and three, five. So I'm just coming over the top with it just to show where it's going. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and three, five, up, down. Up down, up down, up down, up down, up down, and three, five. What I'm doing here, I'm using my individual fingers, so I'm putting my index finger down here on the third, and then dropping my ring finger on the fifth. You can do that as a bar chord equally well as just using your fingers and as I say you can also use the slide if you do use the slide remember you want to keep the slide right over the fret or fret marker itself yeah for difficulty you know you can as I say splint these fingers together a little bit to give yourself a bit of stability that is the basic thing but as with what we were doing before, up, down, up, down, up, down is a key to it. There's a lot of damping going on here, and I'll show you what I sort of automatically do with the left hand. When I'm doing the downstroke, I tend to flip my finger down to double sort of damp it. I'm damping it here by putting my hand on the bridge. You see that heel part of my hand on the bridge to damp it. You can em oh, sort of like overemphasize that up down. So. There's virtually no downbeat. I'm just. See what I'm doing there? I'm skipping. Alternating between the top and bottom strings. And then I'm actually missing that out. I'm implying the downbeat. So that's an in interesting thing. An implied beat or an implied note. So what we're doing here. Just back off a little bit. I'm flipping this finger down. And sort of implying that beat.
may be getting a little complicated between the two, but to show you don't have to play all of the notes all of the time. <laughs> See, that down is really hardly played at all. The downbeat is hardly there, hardly played. It's a gap almost. So implying things starts giving you a little bit of subtlety. While we're talking about subtlety, I'll touch on the subject of what is known as dynamics. Basically, that's how loud or quiet you play. This adds a degree of subtlety to a number. So listen to a song and you'll hear sometimes it has quiet verses in it. The volume comes down, the intensity comes down, and then it rises again. Whether it's rock, blues, orchestral, jazz, they all use this technique of dynamics and it's very very important in terms of adding to the expressiveness of your music this one's interesting because if you listen to the way zz top play it uh it start it comes in very quiet because i think it just comes in with the drums and i think they're just like just doing a rim shot on the with the sticks and then the guitar will just come in quite quietly. See here, there was hardly any of the downstroke. It's just this, a brush up. I'm just playing the bass note, not playing everything not playing full chords, not playing loud. There's a rumor going round that Texas town about a shack outside the green See the difference there between playing gentle and full on and he can vary that throughout the song okay there's one little thing uh, i'm going to add into this which is the sort of rundown if you caught my uh blues shuffle part two you will have seen i did this where we go on the middle string three two one open and we did the, so it's a rundown and turnaround. On this, it's just a rundown. Uh, and it's a figure, if you listen to the ZZ Top, they keep introducing this. It's pitched higher up the guitar. But what I'm trying to do here, and I'll recap this, is just keep our hand movements to a minimal, minimum, sorry. So we're going, I'm alternating here with the picking. I'm going from, middle and the high string that's the run so that's that's the uh, slowed down rhythm let's show you what's going on here third fret second fret first fret then that second part is open open three four five in the middle string I do what's called a hammer on I strike the third and then I don't hit it with the plectrum. I just bring my finger down. See if I can show you that. But just back off, see what's happening. You won't see a strike on that third note. I'm playing.
playing all down strokes there. And I'm damping. I'll just do that at speed. Okay, I'll do that top figure as well. We'll add that in. So that that's what comes in at various times. Let's let's just do that, that rundown is the same as we had before. Three, two, one, zero, and then it's uh, then this. There's a couple of ways of doing this. You can slide your hand down. You can just say do it with one finger like this. Slide down. Or you can do it a more efficient way, but you do have to. So, well, you, you you're moving your heart. You can do it in a more efficient way by just keeping your hand here. Ring finger, middle finger, first finger, and then. So it doesn't matter which way you do it, really. You do have to slide your hand down if you do that. There is quite a big jump there, because whichever way you come down, you're going to end up with your, your finger here, and then you've got to, as you play that note, the bass. You get a little time get your hand up from here you really on this figure you really do want to put have your hand in the position here ready at the third fret so it's two strikes on the bass string hammer on and then fifth in the middle I'm flipping this to get to get a real snap, much more percussion, uh, staccato sort of sound rather than. You hear the difference there? When I'm not damping it, that's an important thing about the cigar box guitar. I don't aim to replicate the notes that are be played on a tune you can't when you've only got three out of six strings but a lot of the things you will hear say with that zz top there'll be a lot of droney power chords and you've already got that but it does mean you do need to concentrate on keeping that chugging rhythm going rather than just sort of splitting off to do solos it will sound awfully thin if you do that okay there's a little embellishment there, and I'm just on the third fret, the blues man's friend. Remember that. So it's open three on the middle, open three on the top string, open. The fingers alternating between the middle and the top and back to the middle and back to the top. Alternating strokes here for a bit of fluidity. You could do it all down straight. You could do it all with down strokes, but I 
I tend to alternate and also there's this hammer on where you sort of get two notes for the price of one. Let's put all that together. Again. I hope that might have given you a little bit of help. Remember, it's not all about speed and flying up and down the fretboard. Efficiency, keeping the movement of the, the hand and the fingers to a bare minimum. You don't need to do that much. It's not about showing off. So we're restricting our movements here. Really the third and the fifth fret there. But remember, you got to get the rhythm right. It's up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and three, five. Don't worry about the fact there are no chord changes. It's just this. It's almost like an implied, oh, it's going to go somewhere. No, it's going to go back again. And to stop it getting too boring, you know, you've got this little... <laughs> to get you back into it so there's also little motifs and then you know there's little flipping around on the third fret your blues man's friend don't matter what order as long as you keep the rhythm going Don't go off those lines, just be creative. You know, your rhythm here can be stop, start, as long as you can come back in, like with a metronome. You gotta keep it ticking over in your head or with your foot. Don't try and go too fast. Take it nice and slow. If you don't get it, slow it right the way down. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and three, five, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and three, five. Take it nice and steady. Don't rush it. You don't need to rip at it full speed. If you try doing that right from the start, you might get discouraged, get some really bad habits. Take it nice and easy. Relax. Have a good time with it. Okay, thanks for watching and bye for now.